Hi, welcome to Conquering Chronic Illness. My name is Teresa. I am a woman, wife, and mother. Conquering Chronic Illness, and today we're going to talk about how I am divorcing perfectionism. Hey, could you do me a favor? Subscribe, and I'll see you in the comment section down below. Today, we're going to be talking about perfectionism from the psychological perspective, not the philosophical one. And so perfectionism is a broad personality style characterized by a person's concern with striving for flawlessness and perfection. And it is accompanied by critical self-evaluations self and concerns regarding others' evaluations. So, I, and this has probably been a 10 year process for me, probably even longer, but I have been slowly peeling black, back the layers of uh, my perfectionism and how it has, um, and the different ways that it is kind of embedded, not only in my personality, but my personal ethos and moral compass and all of those things. So part of the reason I did not view myself as a perfectionist and as a people pleaser was because part of perfectionism um, is this avoidance of all things that you feel like you cannot get perfect. And so because I just inherently avoided things that I knew I couldn't meet um, the standard for, the things that I was doing, I could do really, really well. And so it, I didn't feel like I was being a perfectionist, right? Had I added those things that I knew that I could not get perfect back into the equation, I think my perfectionism may have reared its ugly head a lot more because I would have some of the horrible habits I had at redoing things or quitting things because I couldn't do it well would have reared its ugly head a lot sooner. Um, I think in the past couple of years, I've had to really come to terms with all the ways that perfectionism has kind of creeped its way into my life or is really embedded into my life because there are so many things that I once could do that I could not do or at least do them into the level which I expected they should be done for me. And another reason why I feel like I, for the longest, I did not at all consider myself someone who was a perfectionist or a people pleaser um, was that... Um, I, my perfectionism was focused on getting to this ideal sense of self and this ideal life that I created for myself um, and not so much about doing everything well, but doing what I thought I should be doing perfectly. And so one, I had to come to terms with how much I, what how much of what I thought I should be doing was dictated by what I felt like other people thought I should be doing and how real unrealistic the standards for which I thought what I should be doing was done. So not everything that I said I wanted to do was really what I wanted to do is what other people thought I should do. And like the level which, which I would consider myself successful was really just unrealistic. And as more things got compounded into my life, me being um, an independent adult and then being a married adult and being a mother and then a mother of the disabled child and a working mother of a, a working wife and mother of a disabled child, all those things compounded, limited what I could do. And then we're adding um, chronic illness on top of all of this. So I am a adult wife, mother of a child with disabilities who also has chronic illnesses of her own, who's living in a body that does not have the capacity that it had just a few years ago. And so I could not do the things that I thought I should be doing at the level I thought that I should be doing. And it was 
affecting how I viewed myself and my value as a person. The first thing I had to do was realize that I made up all the rules. <laughs> This is my life. I made up all the rules about what I should be doing, how I should be doing it, and the level that it should be done so I could just remake them all. And the best thing that I did for myself was come to terms with the life that I have now and how much the view of what I wanted to do and the life I wanted to create really did not match the life that I had or the life that I wanted in the future. So I have this idea, it doesn't match where I wanna go and is unrealistic for who I am and what I have to do right now. And I created it, so I can just change it. I can change the goal marker, cause it's my life. And that released me from this unrealistic expectation that I was hold, hold, help, holding myself hostage to in a lot of ways. Um, Another thing that really, really helped me was divorcing myself from the responsibility of other people's opinion of me and my life. A lot of the things that I created, create a lot of the ideals that I created in my life were about how my life should be stem from what I thought other people thought I should be doing. And because I am such an independent thinker, naturally, and because I'm a bit of an anarchist, I have I struggle with um, uh, authority, uh, be, uh, be, uh, not being respectful, but I struggle with following authority. It's something that I I have come to terms with. Um, but but I didn't see myself as someone who really cared about what, what other people thought. But the way that I set up my life proved was proof for me that I really do care about what others think about me and my life. And I had to let that go. I had to let go of the idea that one, people were thinking about me that much. That people were really worried about what I was doing in my house. And then two, that it mattered even if they did think about it especially if they're not lending a helping hand for me to get to the ideal that they think I should be at. Like, why does your opinion matter? And honestly, it doesn't. It absolutely does not. Um, another thing that I really had to learn how to do to divorce this idea of perfectionism, part of perfectionism is me doing it by myself for me. It is, I have to attain this goal. And if I have to ask for help, it is not as meaningful for me <laughs> it is not as um uh the success that i get it just doesn't mean as much if i have to ask for help that's not realistic like as humans we aren't designed to live life independently the whole point of creating family is so we don't have to do life alone. So the idea that I would not enlist my family and friends and my husband and in anything that I need help on just doesn't make sense. And when you take into account the life that I intentionally created, this house that me and my husband and this home that we're cultivating together, of course I'm going to need help from him in running it. Like it just makes perfect sense. We're creating the house together. Of course, the child that we created together, I'm going to need help from him. Like it didn't, didn't it saying it out loud, it does not make sense, but I have had internalized the idea that I had to do it and it had to be done this way and I needed to do it by myself. And that is not true and it's not fair to the people around me who really do genuinely care about me. And Another thing that I really had to um, let go of was the idea that, how do I put it? That what I did determined the value of who I was as a person. Does that make sense? Like I set these goals, I try to accomplish the goal, and if I didn't accomplish the goal, the person who set the goal wasn't as good or as valuable as a person. And that is absolutely insane, but I know, I know for a fact I'm not the only person that thinks that way, that their self-worth is diminished if they don't accomplish the goals that they, and it's as little as keeping the house clean. It doesn't have to be getting a PhD. It is as little as 
literally just keeping the house clean. If my house doesn't look great all of the time, then I am not as good of a person as I thought I was. That is absolutely insane. It is bonkers, but it is the way that I felt genuinely and that I still struggle with, that I genuinely still struggle with. If I don't do, um, if I'm late on a deadline at work, if I forget a minute, like I was routinely at least every third meeting with my psychiatrist, completely forgetting that I had an appointment with my psychiatrist or remembering I had the appointment but getting the wrong time or getting the right time on the wrong date, just a mess. And so I would feel less of a person because I forgot that. Anything that I felt like I was supposed to do, I felt like if I did an accomplishment, I was less of a person. And that is bonkers. The reality is I made up the rules. I changed the rules. If I fail, I just change the rules again. The person who created the rules or created the goal and tried to achieve the goal and failed or succeeded at the goal is still worth the same in all of those phases. What I am able to accomplish is not how good of a person I am. And that is a work in progress. Perfectionism is something that I struggle with on a daily basis, just pulling down those ideas. And oh, it's difficult, but I recognize a lot of my anxiety struggles came from me continually to fail at these unrealistic goals and expectations that I had for my life and removing my beholdenness to those goals and expectations has relieved a lot of anxiety from my life. And that was one of the goals for this year, just to be a less anxious person. And not just to say I'm not worried about it, not actually be worried because it's okay. It's re it really is okay. All right, comment down below. Do you per struggle with perfectionism? And if you do, how do you overcome it? I'll see you in the comment section and in the next video. Thank you.